absolutely appalled at how much people in this country do not think. We are given to understand that, our, uh, that an Arabic guy out there in, up in the mountains financed the most elaborate attack on this country. Do you think some people in a cave, do you think some people in a cave were able to have NORAD stand down? Do you think that people in a cave were able to have all of this happen? And when I think about how many Americans were killed in New York City and believing as I do that this thing was a setup job, this is a textbook operation that Nazis used and they've used it over and over again. America has been suckered in one more time. I don't have to tell you things are bad. Everybody knows things are bad. The dollar buys a nickel's worth. Banks are going bust. Shopkeepers keep a gun under the counter. Punks are running wild in the street, and there's nobody anywhere who seems to know what to do, and there's no end to it. We know the air is unfit to breathe, and our food is unfit to eat. We sit watching our TVs while some local newscaster tells us that today we had 15 homicides and 63 violent crimes, as if that's the way it's supposed to be. We know things are bad, worse than bad. They're crazy. It's like everything everywhere is going crazy, so we don't go out anymore. We sit in the house, and slowly the world we're living in is getting smaller, and all we say is, please, at least leave us alone in our living rooms. Let me have my toaster and my TV and my steel-belted radios, and I won't say anything. Just leave us alone. Well, I'm not going to leave you alone. I want you to get mad. I don't want you to protest, I don't want you to riot, I don't want you to write to your congressmen because I wouldn't know what to tell you to write. I don't know what to do about the depression and the inflation and the Russians and the crime in the street. All I know is that first, you've got to get mad. You've got to say, I'm a human being, God damn it! My life has value! Shalom, Israel. We are the brothers of the house of the redeemed servant. And my name is Jeremiah Huki Karib Kassad bin Israel of the nation of Israel of the house of the redeemed servant. And uh, I have a reading for me today, Brother B. Rashid. B. 
Ben Israel, of the of the nation uh, of Israel, of the house of the redeemed servant. And we're going in, what we're going into today is to let you understand one thing. That this Bible is the coldest book on the planet. Why? Because it's the only Bible, it's the only book that deals with prophecy. This thing was written over 2,000 years ago and longer, okay? But it prophesied of things to come and the things that would happen today. And we're going to go into the Bible and deal with prophecy concerning the Twin Towers. Now, I know this is something that happened over 7, 8, 10 years ago, okay? But the thing is, this Bible speaks of this particular event and outlines it specifically. And we're going to go into the Bible and pull out the historical merit. Okay? But like we always do, we're going to start with Colossians 3 and 17. You read that for us, brother? Colossians 3. Colossians 3, verse 17. Gone. And whatsoever ye do... In word or deed, do all in the name of Hamashiach Yahweh Shah, giving water to the Alahayim and the Abanawa by him. Good. And we're going to give all honor and praise to our Savior, Hamashiach Yahweh Shah, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Okay? Now, today's type topic is going to be 9-11. Dealing with the Twin Towers in specific. We're going to go into the Bible and we're going to prove this, okay? Now, let's start with Deuteronomy 32 and 39 because, you know, people think that, you know, that the, the deaf entity just works on his own and he just go around and, you know, taking people's lives. No, the Heavenly Father kills, okay? If anybody loses their life, it's because the Heavenly Father has authorized them to lose their life. Okay? That makes it all that much more important to get yourself in order and get yourself together and do what the Heavenly Father is requiring of you to do, brothers and sisters. Alright? The Bible says the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Psalms 111 and 10. But let's get this. Deuteronomy 32 and, 20 and 39. Read that, brother. See now that I, even I, am him, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill, and I make alive. I do what? I kill, and I make alive. The Bible says that the Most High kill, and he do what? Make alive. So we got to understand that. And if you understand that the Heavenly Father kills and he makes alive, read on. I wound and I heal. He wounds and he heals. So that would make you go and deal with the Heavenly Father in a different way than this all loving God that loves you no matter what. Okay? The Bible says that the Heavenly Father kills and what? And make alive. Read on. I wound and I heal. Read on. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Uh, nobody can save you out of the Most High's hand. And so that's the same thing that happened with these people with the Twin Towers. This place, it was definitely an inside job. It was definitely something done by the government. But the thing is, the Heavenly Father allowed it to happen. Why? Because there's disobedience from the children of Israel and also the Gentiles. The Heavenly Father is upset with the Gentiles for doing their wickedness, and he's upset with the children of Israel for following the Gentiles in their wickedness, brothers and sisters. So we got to understand that. Now, let's get Habakkuk 2 and 12. What wickedness was the most high upset with? Let's find out. To a 
Habakkuk 2 and 12. Art thou not from everlasting, O Lord my God, my mine holy one? Salaki, Habakkuk, Habakkuk 2 and 12, brother. Salaki. Rebecca 2 and 12. Woe to him that builded a town with blood. The Bible says, Woe unto him that built a town with blood. Read. And established a city by iniquity. Exactly. So when the first sales, when the slaves used to come in on cargo slave ships, they used to go downtown to exactly where the, the areas in the area in the vicinity where these twin towers were erected okay this was a place where, where slaves were sold not only that woe unto him that built a town with blood they took this land of america from the native american indians by force and killed them and then they got you worshiping thanksgiving every year for the celebration of the death and slaughter of the native americans you got to be really examined what these holidays consist of, brothers and sisters. It should, is this something that I should be taking part in? Is this something that I should teach my children? Well, the Bible says what? Read it again from the top. Habakkuk 2, verse 12. Woe to him that builded a town with blood and established a city by iniquity. And established a city by lies. And that is what you call America. And so the Heavenly Father is upset with what's going on in America. Okay? He's upset. The Bible says, whoa, that means destruction is on the way. Now let's get Zephaniah 3 and 1. Zephaniah 3 and 1. Brothers and sisters. Zephaniah 3 verse 1. Read. Woe to her that is filthy and polluted. Woe to her that is filthy, filthy and polluted. That's America. Filthy why? Because it's a town that's been built on robbery, lies. Robbery and lies. And murder. The Bible says, Woe unto her that is filthy and and read polluted to the oppressing city to the oppressing city see what is the number one capital on earth new york city read it again woe unto her that is filthy and polluted to the oppressing city oppressing who the children of israel read on verse two she obeyed not the voice. She received not correction. She obeyed not the voice of the Heavenly Father, and she what? She trusted. Oh, she received not correction. She trusted not in the Lord. She drew not near to hear God. Exactly. They don't want to hear the words of the Heavenly Father. Okay. What they had is they if they got a they got a bull, a, a a a golden calf sitting outside the front of this on the front of this towers, okay, which was the golden calf with the children of Israel built when they was when Moses went up into the mountain, Mount Sinai. Okay? The thing is, that's their God. And that's who they worship. Money. See? Money. Now, it says, she obeyed not the voice, she received not correction, she trusted not in the Lord. And we got to really examine that. Why did this happen? Why did the Twin Towers explode? Why? Because they hear, because she obeyed not the voice of the Lord, she received not correction, she trusted not in the Lord. That's why. That's why it happened. 
Oh, well, brother, 9-11 was an inside job. Yeah, but the Heavenly Father allowed it to happen. Okay? Now, let's get Zephaniah 2 and 2. Zephaniah 2 and 2. Done. Before the decree bring bring before the decree bring forth. Before the day pass as the chaff. Before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you. Before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. Done. Before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. That's what happened. That was a day of the Heavenly Father's anger. Even though it was executed by men, it was a day of the Heavenly Father's anger. Then we need to understand that. Okay? Like we read in Deuteronomy, the Most High kill and he make alive. So yes, people died. But who did it? The Heavenly Father allowed it to happen. So that's what we need to understand. That's why we need to fear him. Okay? Now, let's go to Zephaniah 1 and 6. Zephaniah 1, verse 6. Huh. And them that are turned back from the Lord, and those that have not sought the Lord, Right. Nor inquired for him. Right. Because these people haven't sought the Lord. These people haven't went and inquired about the Heavenly Father. They have trusted in man. They have trusted in Christianity. They have trusted in the deceit of this world. That's their problem. Read. Verse 7. Hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord God. Right. For the day of the Lord is at hand. The day of the Lord is at hand, which is vengeance, death, and destruction. Read. For the Lord hath prepared a sacrifice. Woo. He hath bid yet. The heavenly Father has prepared a sacrifice. That's these children of that's these people that died. Not because of something that the Heavenly Father was doing, but to bring vengeance for the evil that has been done in this land. Read. Verse 8. And it shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass. Lord's read. In the day of the Lord's sacrifice, that I will punish the princes and the king's children. That's right. Read on. And all such as are clothed with strange apparel. That's right. Because if you see the Hebrew Israelites, you see we're dressed and our fringes, our borders are blue, and our garments. You see us dressed this way. This is how our forefathers dressed. But when you go and you see these people in these, these suits and these ties and this business wear, the Heavenly Father calls this strange attire. See? Read on. Verse 9. Uh -huh. In the same day also will I punish all those that leap on the threshold. Woo! That do what? Leap on the threshold. Because what you have seen is, if you go back to those videos, you'll see people leaping out of these windows to their death. If you go back to those videos, you'll see people leaping out of these windows to their death. Crying on the Heavenly Father as they fall down. Read. Which fill their master's houses with violence and deceit. Which fill their master's houses with violence and deceit. Okay? Because that's, the, that's where the stock exchange was. The stock, the stock exchange was in those towers. Okay? 
and they fill their master's houses with violence and deceit because wars come about through that stock exchange. Read on. Verse 10. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, that there shall be the noise of a cry from the fish gate. Right. A noise of a cry. What cry? The cry of when those people was dying in, those, in that building. The destruction that was happening all around and the tears that went out. It, it, there be a cry. Read on. From the fish gate and a howling from the second and a great crashing from the hill. And a great crashing from the hill. When the build, when them buildings came tumbling down. When the walls come tumbling down. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. You know why? Because the Heavenly Father has taken vengeance for the evil that has happened to the children of Israel. And I don't mean any disrespect, but at the same time, I am happy that the Heavenly Father loved us enough to visit us in this day of destruction. Read on. Verse 11. How ye inhabitants of Mactish. Uh, right. For all the merchants, for all the merchant people are cut down. For all the merchants people are cut down. Why? Because the, tw the Twin Towers was the stock exchange, brothers and sisters. Read. All they that bear silver are cut off. There you go. Bear silver are cut off. Read. And it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their leaves. That's right. He's going to search Jerusalem and he's going to punish the men that are on their leaves, that are not doing their job, the ones that's not standing on these corners, the ones that's not uplifting the heavenly Father and his Bible. He's going to punish them. Read. That say in their heart, the Lord would not do good Neither will he do evil. See that? And that's what they think. Read on. <laughs> Therefore, their gods shall become a booty. Right. They shall become for lucre's sake. Read. And their houses a desolation. Come. Read on. They shall also build houses but not inhabit them. Right, read. And they shall plant vineyards, but not drink the wine thereof. Why? Because they're going to pass away. Read. The great day of the Lord is near. The great day of the near. Lord is near. Read. It is near. And hasten greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty men shall cry there bitterly. The mighty men, like your firemen, your policemen, all these men was crying when they seen this destruction of this building come down. Don't worry, don't worry, we're getting to it. Read on. The concrete was pulverized from river to river. There was dust powder, two, three inches thick. The concrete was just uh, pulverized. In addition to those pictures we've all seen too much on television before, when a building was deliberately destroyed by world-placed dynamite to knock it down. I heard a second explosion. There was a uh, heavy-duty explosion. Then there was a second day explosions and then the subsequent collapses. Yeah. An explosion blew and it knocked everybody over. To me it sounded like an explosion. It sounded like gunfire. Bang, 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 bang. And then all of a sudden, three big explosions. We heard a big explosion coming down. And then the entire top of the building just blew up. We saw some kind of explosion. By the force of the explosions. Big explosion. Blew 
Let's back into the eighth floor. Then we get to the lobby. This is the biggest explosion. The lobby looks as though a bomb had exploded there. A huge explosion now raining debris. It's been a huge explosion. Huge explosion that we all heard and felt. We just witnessed some kind of follow-up explosion. We heard a very loud blast explosion. A secondary explosion at Tower 1 camp. That is another bomb going off. He thinks that there were actually devices that were planted in the building. We planted in the building. Today is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. And thick darkness, like all that smoke that went out when the builders came down. See? This Bible is the coldest book on earth. And you got simple Negroes running around here talking about this, that, and the other. But you can't see that this Bible, this is talking about a specific event that went down in history. One of the most greatest terrible atrocities that happened in American history. And you don't think this Bible is dealing with it? Well, you tell me another time will this happen. Read on. A day of the trumpet and alarm against the fifth city. The fifth city mean New York like, City, read. And against the high tower. Woo, against the what, brother? The high tower. This Bible is the coldest book on earth. Against the what, brother? The high tower. Against the high towers, read on. And I will bring distress upon men. Right. But they shall walk. That they shall walk like blind men. Right. Because they have sinned against the Lord, and their blood shall be poured out as dust, and their flesh as the dung. Right. Why? Because when people were jumping out of the building, they hit the ground and they splattered, and their body parts was all over the ground like dung. See. This Bible is the coldest book on earth. It's outlining this event specifically. And your mighty men are the so-called firemen in your police office. And your national guards. And everybody that came out to help, see? Read on. And I will bring a Salaki. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord. Woo. Right. Neither your silver nor your gold will be able to deliver you. That's in this day and the days to come. Money and gold ain't going to save you, brothers and sisters. You got to get right and make peace with the Heavenly Father. That's what you got to do in order to, in order to be saved. Not say some sinner's prayer and like that's going to save you. I'll be dipped in water like that's going to save you. No. What's going to save you is making peace with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Read on. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. Woo! By the fire of his jealousy. Make, Read on. For he shall make even a speedy reading of all them that dwell in the land. Exactly. Of all them that dwell in the land. So... We're looking forward to your comments. We're looking forward to um, uh, your opinions on this particular topic. And you tell me what this is talking about if it ain't talking about 9-11. Okay? Also, let's not forget to go to our page and watch the rest of our videos. We got other videos that have been uploaded to, to help you, brothers and sisters, in this walk and to help you in your transformation. Okay? All, all we would like to say is keep the faith. And Kwam Yashal. Molten metal pools under both towers after they collapsed and Building 7. Now, Building 7 wasn't even hit by a, a jet. Part of the problem is that most people simply don't know much about Building 7 due to the extraordinary secrecy surrounding this collapse. And this was a 47-story skyscraper. This building fell at 525. It was not hit by a plane. This building had fires on only two or three floors. And it was brought down by what we know 
was a controlled demolition. Demolitions, they look just like that. You know, a kink in the middle, and then that building just comes straight down almost at free fall speed. They first blow one of the central columns so the building falls in on itself. Building 7 had a classic crimp or wedge. Its central column was blown out first so it didn't structurally damage buildings just a few feet away to from To understand that people who try to maintain empires and create empires do it by manipulating the people they're trying to conquer. You might want to ask yourself why the entire culture is utterly saturated with mass media entertainment from all sides, while the educational system in America continues its stupefying downward slide since the U.S. government decided to take over and subsidize the public school system. What your government pays for, it gets. When we understand that, then we look at government-financed institutions of education and see the kind of students and the kind of education that's being turned out by these government-financed schools. Logic will tell you that if what is being turned out in those schools was not in accord with what the state and the federal government wanted, then it would change it. The bottom line is that the government is getting what they have ordered. They do not want your children to be educated. They do not want you to think too much. That is why our country and our world has become so proliferated with entertainments, mass media, television shows, amusement parks, drugs, alcohol, and every kind of entertainment to keep the human mind entertained so that you don't get in the way of important people by doing too much thinking. You had better wake up and understand that there are people who are guiding your life and you don't even know it. We're in a lot of trouble because you people and 62 million other Americans are listening to me right now because less than 3% of you people read books. Because less than 15% of you read newspapers. Because the only truth you know is what you get over this tube. Right now, there is a whole, an entire generation that never knew anything that didn't come out of this tube. This tube is the gospel, the ultimate revelation. This tube can make or break presidents, popes. Prime Ministers, this tube is the most awesome goddamn force in the whole godless world. And woe is us if it ever falls into the hands of the wrong people. And when the largest company in the world controls the most awesome goddamn propaganda force in the whole godless world, who knows what shit will be peddled for truth on this network. So you listen to me. Listen to me. Television is not the truth. Television is a goddamn amusement park. Television is a circus, a carnival, a traveling troupe of acrobats, storytellers, dancers, singers, jugglers, sideshow freaks, lion tamers, and football players. We're in the boredom killing business. But you people sit there day after day, night after night, all ages, colors, creeds. We're all you know. You're beginning to believe the illusions we're spinning here. You're beginning to think that the tube is reality and that your own lives are unreal. You do whatever the tube tells you. You dress like the tube. You eat like the tube. You raise your children like the tube. You even think like the tube. This is mass madness, you maniacs. In God's name, you people are the real thing. We are the illusion. The last thing the men behind the curtain want is a conscious, informed public capable of critical thinking, which is why a continually fraudulent zeitgeist is output via religion, the mass media, and the educational system. They seek to keep you in a distracted, naive bubble, and they are doing a damn good job of it.